are back live in the warehouse talking about ways to make money online in 2021 without eBay or Amazon. And the, this could be, you know, without PayPal, without selling online. Really, I'm trying to just talk about um, alternative ways of doing this. I've been selling online for a long time, uh, for, you know, over a decade now. Uh, and I wouldn't say I've been doing the same thing over and over again. But uh, it's getting to the point now where I know what I, I can sell good. I know what's in my area. Uh, I know the things I can get at thrift stores. I know what uh, what pallet liquidation companies I can buy from. And I want to kind of take the money I've made and use that to build bigger things. Not necessarily just, um, you know, buying more inventory, but, um, you know, just stuff that, uh, what ways you can make money. Um... Hello, Rachel and Logan. How is everyone doing? Hope you had a good Christmas, a good, it's the last week of the year. It is, uh, what is it, December 29th, December 30th, Wednesday. Um, not sure what the schedule's gonna be for next year as far as, li excuse me, as far as live streams go. But um, I'll keep you guys informed. Uh, what can we talk about? So the first way that we're gonna make money online in 2021 without eBay or Amazon uh, I'm, I've been talking about content websites a whole bunch. If you follow the group, you've seen more people make videos about reselling, about their side hustles. Uh, I think there are going to be a lot of people looking for new side hustles next year. Um, there are a lot of people who are out of the workforce. Maybe their jobs have been eliminated because it was at a restaurant or uh, something that just died in the past year. Uh, they're going to be looking for ways to make money on their own terms. Um, I think a lot of people are fed up with having jobs and that whole structure and everything. Maybe some people aren't, I don't know. Just from what I see from my perspective, I see a lot more people like going outside of cities and going into more rural areas or more suburban areas. Uh, and when that happens, there are more side hustles because there are less, you know, less employers, uh, less corporate jobs. And so if you can create content online about what your side hustle is, it can be babysitting, it can be power washing decks, it can be, you know, anything really that you make money with. There's going to be a lot of people out there who uh, who take that information and then make their own money. And if you can help people, make, I was talking to my brother the other day. Um, he's down in, in Florida right now, and he's trying to figure. He's graduated college, or he's about to graduate college in June or whenever they graduate college, April, March. I don't know. In twenty, and in, in, this is his last semester at Michigan State. And so we're talking, and he wants to be a real estate agent. There's nothing wrong with being a real estate agent, but he sees this as like you know this get rich quick scheme which certainly there are some people who have gotten rich quickly uh, selling real estate, but he doesn't really have a passion for it. And I think if you don't have a passion for something, um, you know, it's obviously everyone is 21 at some point in their life and everyone makes the same decisions and the same mistakes oftentimes. And so I can't really judge him uh, for wanting to do that because when I was 21, I wanted to do those kind of things too. But I was just explaining to him uh, the best way to make money that's sustainable, that you're not going to get burnt out doing, and that's going to give you a lot of satisfaction, you know, personal satisfaction, is finding ways to help people make money. It's some quote, maybe it's Zig Ziglar, I don't know who it is, but they were saying the best way to be a millionaire or the best way to be a billionaire, the best way to make $10 million is make uh, 100 people a million dollars, something like that. Basically, you know, the details of the quote don't really matter. The idea is, is that if you can create a job or a business or a YouTube channel or a website or a consulting service or whatever it is that helps people make money, um, they're going to be incentivized to spend more money with you and you're going to earn more money. And so from a content-based perspective, I'm looking right now at, uh, at Christmas tree farms. For whatever reason right now, I'm interested in you know buying a few acres of land and putting on some Christmas trees there. And uh, you know, in five or seven or six years, having you know a, a, a farm where people go and cut their own trees. And so I'm reading about this, and there's some YouTube channels where the the guy only has you know 2,000 subscribers or 3,000 subscribers, but those views he gets are worth so much more than someone who makes a content-based channel about you know I don't know men's grooming tips or stuff like that. That doesn't really help you make money. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that stuff, but just the the niches where you can where people can have value, you know, where, where, where the transaction is much more direct. Uh, I just say side hustle stuff. I'm sure there's examples, you know, investing, I guess could be one, um, you know, home renovation, things like that. Uh, I, I think that in those instances, um, you're going to make more money than just like, you know, standard content 
uh, that people watch for entertainment or, you know, relaxation or whatever it is. Uh, and in the instance of this Christmas tree farm, this guy who had, you know, 2,000 subscribers was selling ebooks for 50 bucks, and I bought one. I haven't read it yet, but I bought one about just like the basics for running a Christmas tree farm. And he's not some huge YouTuber with a huge following, you know, getting 45,000 or 100,000 views per video. He'll get 500 views per video, but the people who watch those videos are genuinely interested, uh, and that really helps, um, you know, making money in that way. Uh, we have some comments. I'll, I have some more. I'm going to go through some more. You know, this isn't going to be as a long uh, as long of a live stream because it's the end of the year and not a lot to talk about. But I will answer your questions, and I do have a few more uh, ways to make money in 2021 besides selling online. Not because I'm going to stop doing it. Um, I, I'm sure I'll stop in some ways, but uh, I'm just, you know, I want to help you guys have more and more and more stuff. So number one is content business. And uh, I'm going to lump in, uh, you know, consulting in there too, because the best way to get consulting jobs, in my opinion, uh, is to create free content. And so like every consulting job I've had for Amazon FBA has been because the person saw me on YouTube. Uh, that's my content based business. Um, we've got Rachel Logan, Uni Kevin, Adele, uh, Rebecca, Hustler of Culture, and CJ, as well as uh, uh, Michelle. Hope everyone is doing good. So uh, Logan says, thank you for not allowing shitheads in the Facebook group. Getting tired of it in some of the other groups. Yeah, if you don't know, I have a Facebook group linked below. It's WBK Ultra Group. And I've been very, uh, I've been very careful with checking over all the posts. Because right now, there are a lot of people complaining. The group's almost 7,000 members, and so... When you hit that, you know that kind of capacity, it's easy for a lot of dingbats to go under the radar. Uh, but I really try my best to make sure that all the posts are helpful, uh, and that there's no one just like complaining about bad customers or you know being overtly negative or just stuff like that. So thank you for uh, appreciating it. Rachel says, "Yes, Happy New Year! Just sent my first FBA shipment of books off yesterday." Wish me luck, Rachel. Good luck and good job. I have a shipment I, I prepared before Christmas. I didn't send out because I was worried about it uh, being destroyed or damaged along the way because shipping is crazy right now. And I have to send one out too with uh, a couple hundred video games. Uh, Happy New Year. Do you ever sell used games as disc only on Amazon FBA without the manual? I do. I've got a stack of DVDs and discs right by the side of my computer. I have to go through. I'm buying a Eco Pro 2 tomorrow, and I'm gonna go through and buff all those out. And uh, put, I just put them in um, a jewel case. Uh, I don't have any around me. I put them in a jewel case, and I say acceptable, no, uh, no manual. And then I say I, I don't say no original case. I say comes in a jewel case. Um, sometimes. You know, I, I started off that sentence saying something else, and I changed it midway through. And so what I say is, uh, does not include manual, or I do say uh, in a jewel case. And if you don't know a jewel case, it's just a small plastic case. I don't have any around here. Uh, occasionally, I'll also use just like a, a Wii game case like this, or any kind of, uh, you know, just case like this for video games. Um, I've never experimented with selling video games in jewel cases, but I don't think it'd be a big deal. Hey, we got five bucks from Rideshare Otter saying I main I was mainly doing rideshare before the pandemic hit. I was looking for something safer and found your channel. I'm already selling locally. Rideshare Otter, good job. That's a great way to do it too. Uh, to make money without selling online is ride sharing, but again, it's dependent upon people, you know, sharing rides. Um, that's why it's good to diversify. Certainly, don't want to be, you know. Some people might say you should go all in on one thing. I don't think that's the case. That's how you get burned out. I mean, personally, when I've worked, you know, 90 hours a week on the businesses, I don't like them more. Uh, I mostly get burnt out, and I end up uh, ignoring things, you know, aspects of the business that I, you know, the maintenance stuff. If you spend, like, for me, if I were to spend, you know, 90 hours or 80 hours a week trying to make money, then I'm going to neglect, you know, the two hours a week that it takes to do your books. Uh, and that is not sustainable, and um, I just really wouldn't recommend it. I recommend uh, doing a few things that you get pretty good at and can make a decent amount of money on. Uh, let's see, we got uh, the content business is a gold mine, says E. Gilvery or Gilvery. 
I think so too. Uh, on my other YouTube channel where I just do basic demonstrations of products and just, I mean, basically at this point I'm filming really anything I want to film. Uh, I didn't have any commissions from uh, December 25th until 28th, but yesterday they started up again and I'm getting, you know, a few orders a day and about a dollar a day still. Uh, just on, you know, that it's just a, a, a very, very basic um, affiliate marketing YouTube channel where I just, let's say I do, I'll make a video titled, you know, Dymo uh, Label Writer 450, and I'll just talk about this Dymo Label Writer 450. And if someone uh, is looking for a video on that stuff, then they um, they go to my YouTube channel. Or actually, what the, their, their path is, they're not going to my YouTube channel. They don't care about that at all. They Google it, and Google directs them to the best results on YouTube. And uh, because I have such direct titling in the video, uh, my search result is the best result. It's really working out well for one product in particular. I've got about 150 videos, I think. I can. I don't know if I can tell you off the bat. I'm going to look up my Social Blade stats. Social Blade is like a, a website that, um, that uh, tells you basic YouTube stuff like how many subscribers, how many videos someone has. Uh, the channel is called Demo Everything, and I don't, have a, I don't even have a, a little thumbnail up for it yet. I just have, a, you know, oh shit, someone already has a video called Demo Everything. There's, there's four called Demo Everything, um, but mine uh, appears to, this person has the same exact plan as me. They have 440 uploads, but it has no views. I wonder why. Um, okay, so I have 175 uploads. No, that's not me. 140 subscribers. Well, neither of these are me. I only have, I believe, uh, this doesn't say anything at all. So I, what I thought was going to be helpful on Social Blade is not helpful on Social Blade. It's not telling, I can't find my channel, there are too many, I have to change the, the, the picture. I, there are too many um, channels called Demo Everything where mine's not showing up. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just open it up and I'll link to it in the, um, in the description. Oh no, that is me, I have 140 subscribers. Huh, I thought I had way less than that. So that, shh, <laughs> that's funny. I thought I had way less than that. I have 140 subscribers, 175 videos, and 42,823 video views on the channel. And about 10,000 of those are coming from one video about a leapfrog toy. And uh, it's, um, it's interesting, you know, it's the kind of thing where I, I don't know if I, if I wasn't so concerned with like proving it's possible, I'm not sure if I do it, it's kind of boring to do this over and over again. Um, but this just, my main, my main thing with doing this video, there's a few main things, but one of the main things is I wanted to prove to you guys that content can be anything at all. It, um, it can't it can be anything at all. Uh, e. Gilvery says, releasing the YouTube audio as a podcast can give you two times the audience. Yeah, I did that. I've got a podcast going for a little bit, but I stopped because no one was really listening to it. And, um, this Q and A format does not really go well for a podcast. And even for replays, um, it's, uh, you know, even for replays, I've noticed that doing the live stream helps, um, helps my channel get more views overall, but the videos don't do better at all. And the videos kind of do worse than my uploads. So it's kind of in this weird spot where I don't know, I guess what I should do is I should test where I don't do live streams for a week or for a month and I only upload on those days and see if there's a, a similar, you know, change in, in, uh, in views. Because what I really want to do is figure out uh, what's the best way to give a video the best shot at going viral? <clears throat> and I mean, you know, more than more than 100,000 views, more than half a million views. It doesn't really matter at this point. Just, just do considerably better than the rest. And one line of thought goes that if you only upload occasional videos, more people are going to wait to see them. And the other line of thought goes that as long as you're doing, you know, as long as you're doing all sorts of... Um, as long as you're doing all sorts of um, of content, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. You're going to get the eyes on your channel. So where were we with the questions? 
I need to do homeschool consulting. We homeschooled before it was a cool thing to do. Homeschooling is definitely a great niche. Uh, I mean, yeah, anything you do, anything, any interest you guys have, I would recommend that you begin uh, making a website, begin making a YouTube channel. And if there's any questions you have about how to make a website, how to make a YouTube channel, let me know because I can answer those questions. I have, uh, I've been doing it more and more. Uh, Social Blade doesn't give great results. I say the amount is much higher, LOL. Social Blade is not good for anything but looking at um, like upload subscribers and views. I th personally, I think. Their, their way of estimating the wealth or the, the money that you make per video is total bullshit because the CPM on, um, on, on different channels varies widely. Like on, uh, on this channel, I get like 40 bucks CPM and on Demo Everything, if it ever, ever becomes monetized through AdSense, I bet I'll get about, you know, two to four bucks CPM just because of the different audiences. Homeschooling is a very valuable niche, though. CPM stands for cost per mill, and it, it's the money you get paid per thousand video views. Uh, Philadelphia USPS Sorting Center is not first in, first out. Newer orders are being delivered before the older orders. Yeah, they're going to have to do that. Uh, you know, I'm still getting things I shipped out uh, in the middle of December are still being delivered. Um, you know, there's no point in complaining about USPS just because we can't do anything about it. I mean, we've known it. It's been shit all year. And uh, I, I was saying in the Facebook group, if you are someone who gets mad about your customers not chilling out, then you can't be angry. You know, if you tell them to chill, you have to be chill too. Uh, it's just th things are the way they are. We got Alex Pedraza here. Lori Lane, Board Eats, Klesha Ruffins. Trying to figure out what business will be lucrative, not so costly to start. So businesses that cost no money to start, uh, you know, a YouTube channel for sure costs no money. But a lot, a, the turn, the, not the turn off, the, uh, the trade off with a lot of businesses that cost no money to start is that they're not going to pay off immediately. You're, you're essentially uh, putting in sweat equity. That Instead of money, you're putting in sweat. And I don't mean literal sweat. Uh, I mean, you're working hard towards it. You're, you know writing a thousand blog articles or filming a bunch of videos or uh, like in the case of, of Christmas tree farms, you're planting all the trees. Uh, I Let's see, we have uh, uh, Alex says, I sold my first book on Amazon today. Awesome. And then Linda says, thank you for the inspiration. Linda, you're doing good. Alex, you're doing good too. Uh, Baron Von Deel says, question on a live YouTube. Is it your choice to put an ad before I log into this live? I think so, but I, I tried, actually, I can't do, pr I believe with the most recent ad update, you cannot take off pre-rolls. Uh, what I'm going to begin doing for the live streams is, um, is, uh, I think I'm going to take off ads during the live streams because I, my guess is that I, I get more value from the people watching it in its duration than the actual, uh, commercial payout. Because none of my live streams have made more than like a hundred bucks. They really pay. The CPM is is far, far, far lower than for like a retail arbitrage video. Uh, and so I think I'm going to take off ads on all my live streams and see how that affects. Um, uh, and see if that affects how the uh, the channel does. I got down to like typically my channel gets between like we'll say about eight thousand or, or about four thousand views a day. You know. Three to three to six thousand views a day, about four thousand. Uh, right near Christmas, I got down to twenty nine hundred views a day. That was my lowest it's ever been. But I, I assume you know I have a lot of retail arbitrage videos, and so not a lot of folks are looking up retail arbitrage videos on Christmas. So that made sense to me. Uh, now that people are getting back into the, the swing of things, trying to make some money, my channel is popping back up. But I think I want to be around ten thousand views a day. Uh, when my channel was making the most money last. July, so a year and a half ago about, I was getting about 10,000 views a day. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's going to be that, uh, it's going to be that difficult to do that. Uh, Michelle says possible viral video. I would guess lots of keywords in SEO so that you get a possible high amount of, uh, page pulls on Google. So that's kind of what I'm seeing for very basic product reviews. But in the in the the niche of so if there's not a lot of, if there is not a lot of competition, 
uh, in your niche, you know, doing individual reviews, for example, uh, if I were to review Chuck Norris Top Dog, and I put the title of the video as Chuck, Nor Chuck Norris Top Dog, the only videos I would be competing against for traffic, uh, when someone Googles Chuck Norris Top Dog, well, I guess in that instance, I'll be competing against clips from the video. But it, let's say it's, uh, you know, a book. And, and I, I was reviewing the book. Um, I would get a lot more search traffic from Google because there would be less competing results. Uh, and therefore, more would be, you know, it'd be easier to be the top result is what it comes down to, really. Whereas if I'm doing, like, retail arbitrage, uh, keyword stuffing the title is not as effective because there's thousands of videos on retail arbitrage on YouTube. Uh, and so you're not going to get the same benefit as you would on a less crowded niche um, just because the people who have the, the authority in that niche, because there are so many videos and so few people, they're going to have an easier time maintaining that. And that's kind of why I make a lot of Dollar Tree videos because for whatever reason, YouTube has decided that I'm an authority on Dollar Tree Retail Arbitrage. Um, looking at my channel right now, my top video has a million views, $45 an hour retail arbitrage. Uh, second one is over half a million. Third one is getting up towards half a million. And it's all just because, for whatever reason, uh, YouTube said, hey, this, this guy is the Dollar Tree video guy. I'm not sure. Uh, put it after if I, let's see, Matthew Machuka says, do you have an accurate table on CPM? The way I check out CPM is I go to bid on ads. And so I'll go into AdWords and I'll, I'll, I'll create a campaign that I'm not actually going to, you know, put money into, but I'm just going to see what the estimate is, is, uh, on, on YouTube ads. And so, uh, YouTube takes, I think they take 60% or no, they, they take 40%. How much does YouTube take? from ads, from AdSense. They take, yeah, it's a 45-55 split. So Google takes 45% of your ads. Um, so let's say, you know, you're doing videos about car insurance and the CPM is 100 bucks, uh, an, you know, 100 bucks, which means for every thousand times that video ad is displayed, you pay 100 bucks. Uh, if that's the case, then you would get $55. And there's not really a table for that, but that's the way you do it. Try adding an ad towards the end. I actually tend to watch it. So in a five minute video, put the ad on the four minute mark, just an idea. Yeah, I, I, I really wanna boost watch through time on my videos. And I was watching a few, I have ad blocker on my computer, so I had no idea that some of my live streams had like 60 ads in them, it was crazy. Can a person get monetized for book reviews? Ask Linda Martin. You can on YouTube to get monetized. You have to have at least a thousand subscribers and at least 4,000 hours of content watched. That's a lot of content, uh, but it is doable. Is there a way to see your eBay sales for the whole year? The app just gives the last 90 days. You, I believe you have to, uh, I believe you have to go into the desktop to, to see that. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, actually I did because I only made about fifteen grand on, on eBay this year. I don't really sell on eBay that much at all. Uh, but to do that, you would go to, uh, let's see, is there like a seller dashboard button? You go to my eBay, you go to selling. And uh, after you go to selling, you probably would go to, so there's got to be something here that tells you. If you click on sales, which is also performance, then you yeah you can do the you can do the whole year in in a, a custom period it looks like. So from for me from January first, twenty twenty, until today, I did. Yeah, about fifteen thousand dollars in sales. So uh, yeah, that's uh, you know pretty pretty par for the course. I only spent I spend minimal time on eBay. It's mostly just like things I bought four or five years ago. Are thrift stores dead in twenty twenty one? No, they are not. I just went to one. 
How do you decide which of your platforms to dedicate your time, considering people can do full time on any of them? Asks Comp TV, and uh, that's that's a problem I have. Um, I'm not good at sticking to a schedule, uh, so I decide by what I want to do that morning or what I want to do that, that you know that week, and it's not good. Um, I think what I'm gonna do. I think what I'm gonna do is. I, I go back and forth where sometimes I'll have like, okay, Wednesday is a YouTube day. Tuesday is a, is a, is a, a sourcing day. Pretty much every time, Monday is a, is a shipping day for me. I have all the sales from the weekend, and, uh, and Monday is a shipping day, right? So t that's that. Uh, Tuesday is a day I have been going up to a local auction. I think I might, I might um, backpedal on that, or not, I, I might move back a little bit from going every week. I might do local auctions every twice every week or I mean bi-weekly every two weeks or once a month uh, just because I'm kind of losing interest in that the money's gone down from like 600 bucks a week to like 400 bucks a week which isn't still pretty sizable I guess but it's just like it takes probably eight hours to do that and I'm just not really I'm kind of running out of easy things to sell too uh, so I guess that's something that I should do is, is figure out what my schedule is going to be uh, let's see, uh, where else were we? Uh, top 10 video idea, top 10 ways to get banned from eBay, then Amazon, FBA, Mercari, etc. I don't even know if I can name 10 ways. Um, let's see. I mean, th th there's various forms of lying are good ways to get banned, I guess. Uh, there are a lot of weird nuances like beach body DVDs that people wouldn't know about. Oh yeah, the Vero list and all that stuff. Yeah, that's, um... The issue with that is, is if you put a video out like that, then if anything changes, you don't want to be, you don't want people to get banned because oh, they think my video is everything. I guess you can always just put a disclaimer at the beginning saying, hey, you know, this is some of the things. There's more. Do your own research. Chaz says, do you still recommend buying bulk book Gaylords for Amazon? I do. Uh, I stopped doing it because I was getting sick and I was, I had to commute an hour to the warehouse, but definitely profitable. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, do you make a list at the end of the day with five to ten things you will do tomorrow? No, I don't do that. Um, I don't do that. I should do that. I, I mean, these are all things I have done, but like I'm in, I'm still in vacation mode right now. I got back on Sunday, and I have not been working very much this week. Uh, but I'm ready to start 2021 strong, and I'll, I definitely will have to schedule more things, I guess, like that. Uh, here's another viral video topic from E. Gilvery. How Amazon FBA pays my mortgage. That is, that would be a good video. But the thing is, is I, I'd have to have a consistent, like right now, my FBA is, I'm, I only have like a thousand items left. Uh, less than that, actually, because I guess got returns. I'm sorry, I got my inventory sent back to me that was stranded or that was, you know, there for too long. So I think I only have like 780 listings on Amazon FBA and about 600 FBM. So this is like the the fewest that um this is the fewest that I've ever had listing wise. Uh, someone talked about cherry bulk books depends on cherry picking in your area. If you have really good cherry picking locations, then good rollover cherry picking could be more lucrative than bulk. Yeah, so you bulk. I mean, selling books and selling books in bulk. Basically, if you're selling books in bulk, what you're doing is you're managing a small team of people. Um, I would not recommend doing books in bulk on your own, at least not for more than like six months, because it really does get very, very hard. But do those first few pallets by yourself and then bring in a team. Uh, and that's when you can really begin scaling up your bulk book business. And that's when like, you know, those books that sell for $8, $9, a thousand of those, um, you know, becomes quite profitable. Uh Oh, I threw this. The, the, I'm playing with this pen and it just broke. Okie dokie. We are at a half hour in. So we talked about uh, content businesses. We talked about what else we talk about. I think that home cleanouts are going to be a big business next year. Uh, I think that agritourism is going to be a big business over the next few years. Agritourism has kind of been big around the world for a while. Um, you know, certainly in, in places like Colorado, you see a lot of it. Certainly in places like northern Michigan, you see a lot of it. But I think that with the lockdowns and, and all this COVID nonsense and everything that people are becoming more and more familiar uh, with doing outside activities and more and more distrustful of indoor activities. Um, and 
not for any reason in particular, but just because people are, you know, creatures of habit. And so if you don't do indoor stuff for a year, I think that that's just going to be uh, an impact we see. I think that we're going to see a lot of people moving out of cities. We're going to see a lot of people who just want to be more, uh, you know, in the environment, however it may be. And for entrepreneurs, that means you should pursue something uh, in, the, in the vein of agritourism. So what I'm considering right now, and who knows if I actually do it, is uh, it's going to be uh, a Christmas tree farm. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I like Christmas trees. You know, they grow they grow great up here in Michigan. You can buy ten acres for about eighty thousand dollars around here. Uh, it's just farmland, and so you would just you buy the seedlings for like seventy cents a pop. Um, I've only you know spent four hours researching this, so I could be totally wrong. Uh, but I think that like things like that, people going there, you know. What you can do then is you can rent out the space to photographers. You can have events there. You can do all sorts of stuff. Um, I think that that's going to be a, a good a good side hustle in the future for a lot of people in my position, especially who have you know made money on Amazon and now are kind of like looking to take their money and invest it in uh, in larger projects um, and projects that require more you know upfront capital. Because whenever you have a project that requires more upfront capital, you're going to have fewer competition and it's going to be easier to you know I guess mark yourself as a, an authority in that niche. Uh, let's see. For my FBA used books, the last few months I have not worked on it because I am in the black and went over to dispose those books that are going into six months in the next month. Yeah, I just I disposed of a whole lot of stuff and I had everything that was priced at over 100 bucks sent back to me. Uh, we moved out of the city last year into a mountain area, and business is booming at the apple tree farm, state parks around me. Drone racing event for that property. Yeah, I think that's exactly the case. I think that just everything is cyclical, you know, and there are a lot of people who grew up in cities with all the modern conveniences and everything, but they never really, they never really spent a lot of time out in the woods, and that's just, just the way it goes. A buddy of mine is making an agritourist site right now for some rich lady. Never knew what that was until a month ago. When do you think they'll have a free disposal? Says smart coupons. I have no idea. Um, didn't they just have one recently? They probably are going to have one in the spring sometime. Um, but you know, it's anybody's guess. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't wait for a free disposal. I would just do it. Uh, you know, it's it, it's the kind of thing where. Probably you won't. If you wait more, if, I mean, if you're out by a year, definitely, definitely do it. So really, I guess then, I'm assuming that your stuff is over a year old and you're willing to pay more per month to hopefully get a free disposal in a month or two. If that's the case, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. You're going to pay a lot more in fees than you would the disposal fees. If, um, if that isn't the case, if you are only like, you know, five months into your whatever then just let it ride until you start accruing long-term storage fees. And you can go into your automated set or account settings uh, and put an automated inventory uh, standards, automated inventory rules, I guess. Like what I have, anything that's going to incur long-term storage fees gets disposed unless it uh, is being listed at over 100 bucks. And if it's over 100 bucks uh, uh, list price, then it gets sent back to me. And I got a big shipment of stuff just sent to me today and yesterday and i think i spent about 200 bucks to get probably i don't know 50 or 85 items when do long-term storage fees start asks michelle i just wrote an article about that it's uh, on my website but they start in a year you, you're going to pay a storage fee before that but the, the real big dings start uh ultra.com slash FAQ. Uh, the real the real issues start after a year. And then you're going to be getting charged per item fees. And it's, it's not good. You don't want it. Okay, so we said uh, content businesses. We said um, that kind of stuff. I looked into the automation and you're being charged a fee for each listing that is removed on top of the regular fees. Um, the automation, I, I don't, I don't know that. I mean, I, I'd have to check that out because I'm not sure what you're talking about. I did not have any, uh, automated, 
Oh, you're you're talking about um, you're talking about cross posting. You're talking about cross posting listings, I believe. And yeah, they charge some of the uh, platforms charge like ten cents to remove a listing after something sells. That's kind of why I haven't done it yet. Um, I just you know I'm not really I'm not I'm not too excited about it. Uh, so to make a bundle, I found I need a UPC code. Hearing I have to buy one, what is your advice on that? Asks Rachel, the DIY sewing chick. What you can do is you can um, ask for a G10 accept exemption. I'm not sure if they give exemptions on bundles. I've never made a bundle for items. I don't do that. Um, I don't think you have to buy it. But let me let me see. G10 exemption bundle for bundles. I'm not going to go through and read all this stuff off, uh, but I'm going to share a link with you that is going to be extremely helpful. So, Rachel, I want you to click on that and read that. And that's going to be how to list products that do not have a product ID. So no UPC, EAN, ISBN, or JAN. Um, and it's a whole whole big deal, but this is going to explain that to you um, very thoroughly. Automation to remove a listing. If it gets to the point, you will be charged a long-term storage fee. So you have an automation fee and a removal fee that will be charged. I haven't seen that. Uh, automation removal fee Amazon. Uh, let's see. FBA long-term storage fees. I'm not, yeah, you're going to have to send me a link to where you saw that because I, um, I have not noticed that at all. Does Amazon charge a fee to automate inventory removal? You also don't have to delete the listing if you have the inventory removed. You don't have to delete the listing. You can just have the listing stay up and um, and not have any inventory on there. That's going to make your uh, seller performance index look bad, but it's not going to actually affect your storage rate. They only, they only look for stranded inventory and sell-through rate um, for your inventory uh, storage allotment. Do you know if a reseller license allows you not to pay sales tax at stores? Uh, a reseller license, I think you have to have a sales tax. I mean, they're going to call it different things in different states, I think. But that's um, essentially, that, I mean, conceptually that's true. I don't know if the words are exactly the same. Let's see, reseller, license, no sales tax. And you're also going to have to get the approval of the, of the company. So, like, Target's not going to honor that. Some people are going to call it a resale certificate. Some places are going to call it a sales tax permit, it appears. Um, you know, it's a, a sales tax reseller license may help you if the store is willing to accept your exemption. Yeah, they don't have to accept it. I know like Walmart does, but I also know that um, like Target doesn't. What is your opinion on pricing robots? Be cool. Uh, I use Reprice It. I've never used Be Cool, so I have no opinion on it. Um, what stores do you usually go to? I usually go to thrift stores. Um, if I'm doing retail arbitrage, I'll go to like Meyer or uh, or Walmart or Kroger. Uh, please, how to rank product with high competition? So I'm not creating products. I don't play the whole pay for ads game. I'm selling used products. When the times when I have done my own product through, uh, you know, private labeling or whatever, I rely on organic traffic. Uh, and so what I did was I sent out my products to be reviewed by a bunch of blogs. They then link to your Amazon listing or they link to your website, wherever it is. Uh, and then that ranks higher in Google. Uh, and I would assume that 
things that rank high in Google are going to rank high in, on Amazon as well. Assuming that you have a good product and you have, you know, a lot of five-star ratings, uh, you don't have a lot of returns, and uh, the pictures all look good. There's not really any trick to it. Anybody who says there's a trick to it is kind of lying. Um, you can spend a bunch of money. You can try and, you know, you can try and game the system, but honestly, the best, the best tip I can give you is just have good products uh, and show them to as many people as possible. Also, does the slear, the sear, also does the clearance section work well all the time? No, nothing works well all the time. Excuse me, David. You're gonna have to scan every single barcode. You're not. There's no way that you're gonna just like be able to look at a product and know, or drive by a store and know if it's good or bad. You're gonna have to physically walk into all the stores and scan all of the products. And then you're going to learn pretty fast uh, what is good and what's not good. Um, it just takes takes time, takes sweat equity, uh, takes putting your feet on the street, as they say. The issue with a lot of clearance section is that uh, oft times, um, oft times, uh, oftentimes the um, the clearance stuff is being cl uh, clearanced across the country, so you have a lot of product. Um, uh, a lot of product being sold at the same time. Uh, my candy subscription business has been defunct for a long time. It got screwed over uh, with the Donald Trump tariffs. My margins were not high enough to sustain the business, so it's been out since about 2016. Um, I, you know, I, I sold off a lot of the assets, so I don't really have any more at all. I should probably go through and change my LinkedIn, I guess, but I don't really take that stuff seriously. Uh, what's the best way to earn money at a young age? Because I don't have a credit card, and I was thinking something I could pay off via gift cards. That's Don't do that, man. Uh, don't try and get paid in gift cards, although not something that's like 10 bucks a month. Um, so the best way to earn money at a young age, I, I'd say it's get a job. There's a lot of places that don't do business with people who are under 18. Uh, you're going to have a hard time getting you know, an eBay account or a PayPal account. And so you're probably going to be limited to, um, you know, in-person transactions. So either a job, uh, you could, you know, you could shovel driveways, you could mow lawns, uh, you could sell products locally on like a Facebook marketplace and do cash tra transactions only. But uh, in regards to like getting paid via gift cards for doing surveys or that kind of bullshit, don't do it. Um, I just, this, in December, I tried to see how much money I could make on swag bucks doing all the bullshit offers they have. And I made about a hundred bucks and it took me way, 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 way too long. Um, so I would recommend avoiding all of those. Like if, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, Joni says, what if I had a PayPal? Cause I was thinking something online. If you have a PayPal, then you can set up, um, well, you can make your own website. You could uh, you could do a website through Shopify. That's like thirty bucks a month. You could do a website through WordPress and WooCommerce. That's going to be a lot cheaper, like maybe fifteen bucks a year. Um, you could do a website where you host it yourself and just put PayPal links and upload your own pictures. That's going to be like ten bucks a year. Um, it's uh, it's going to be you know basically you're just making your own website with your own stuff. Uh, I don't know what the what the restrictions are for um, for Amazon. I'm sorry for eBay managed payments with age. But I know if you're under 18, you're gonna have a real hard time getting an Amazon account. Jake says microgreens for selling locally could be good money. That's what I was th thinking about with a, with a, a tree farm and just like how you how you utilize the um, how you utilize the land as best as possible. I was reading the. I was. I always watch videos on how to sell microgreens, and some of those guys are making like uh, you know a thousand bucks a week just with one room in their house being used as a greenhouse. Uh, let's see. Which printer do you recommend for printing shipping labels? Um, I use a Zebra LP two eight four four. You can also just use your. Uh, I, I know a, a desktop printer. I have an Epson ET two five five zero. Uh, and then for FBA labels, I use the Dymo Lilo Writer for 50. Uh, 
eBay age requirement because of listings involving into a contract. We require all our members to be 18 or older. Yeah, that might. Yeah, I, I figured it was such. Um, let's see. Can you put links to those printers? It says Hustler of Culture. I've got it on my website, www.dbkultra.com. Slash, well, just there. I think it's not, it's like reseller tools. I think is the is the subheading. You can go there. Do you need a reseller tax license? Ask Sierra Charlie. You do not need it, but there are certain benefits to having it. Michelle M says, just a warning: making a grow room, even if for greens, you may have cops show up because of Karens. I saw someone who was growing greens who was a vegan had the cops break in their door. Says Michelle. Yeah, I've heard of those horror stories too, but luckily. Uh, you can have up to like six marijuana plants in Michigan as an individual. So I don't think, unless I'm like seriously drawing a lot of power, uh, I don't think that's going to happen to me. But I've heard horror stories like that too. Or like they take helicopters and they go over the houses and they see whose house doesn't have snow on it because they're, you know, that's the, the hottest house uh, for people who are getting like off grid power supplies. Um, yeah, luckily in Michigan, we're, we're pro green. <laughs> Pro green leafy greens of all of all varieties. I was looking at a CBD oil business. I was looking at a beard oil business, stuff like that. I think I'm going to have my own, you know, something more branded uh, in 2021, just because it's a fun project to do. You know, I've I, I've you know paid off all my business debts. I've paid off all my student loans. I've paid off all my payments and debts, and so all the money I have now is going to just going to either you know buying buying more land. Um, or it's uh, going to be, you know, reinvested. Um, I tend to be kind of frugal with how I live, and so it's, uh, you know, it, it adds up. Jake says, you plan on buying the land with a tiny house? Would be great for a Christmas tree farm. I don't like tiny houses. I'm too tall for them. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't really know. I was thinking about just getting like a condo and living in a condo with my girlfriend and being that being super low maintenance and then buying like 10 acres of land somewhere like 20 minutes away uh, and building my own warehouse there and working out of that. But I'm not sure. I'm not totally sure. Yeah, Solar Flower says, wow, congrats on paying off all your debt. Yeah, it's uh, it happened earlier in 2020. Um, I didn't really bring it up because, you know, whatever, but it, it happened. Uh, let's see. Christmas trees are big money, but takes years to grow them. Yeah, definitely. It's like six to eight years before you can start getting money, but I don't care about that. You know, if I, it's only like for an acre of Christmas trees, I read it was like 600 bucks or 700 bucks. Um, you know, which is, uh, not, not a bad investment and it just sits there, you know, for eight years. So whatever it's not the kind of it's it'd be a it'd be a hobby basically it'd be a hobby i'm looking for like hobbies i can have and make me a lot of money <laughs> judgment care says check the tax implications of a farmhouse in pennsylvania your taxes will be much much less definitely i've been going through and reading all of the uh reading all the zoning requirements reading all the tax obligations and reading all the requirements for getting certain loans and certain houses it really is insanely complicated to get a good deal on this stuff uh, I have no idea why it's so complicated. I can only assume it's because a lot of people in the government have to justify their jobs. But um, I will hopefully learn this. Yeah, Michelle says, you have a, a few years of labor, a few years of uh, labor a year because you have to cut the buds off because they branch out uh, to make a full-looking Christmas tree. Yeah, you have to, like, shape them, I read. I mean, it's all... It seems to, to be, in terms of like cash crops, Christmas trees seem to be an extremely easy way to go about it. Yeah, a few hours of labor. Yeah, I know what you meant, Michelle. A few hours of labor a year. You got you to gotta weed them too. You have to make sure there's no you know weeds. You got to make sure that they're all healthy. But in this climate, I'm not really worried about it. He's going to make a wood cabin from the Christmas tree, says David. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be funny. Um... I think you should make branded magic eight ball, and the only answer is used books, says Rebecca. Yeah, that's funny. How should I start Amazon FBA? And then every answer is used books. I really do think that's true because it's so hard to screw up used books. You know, 
you're, you're not going to get a lot of returns. They're going to be cheap to buy. You're going to learn the ropes. Um, certainly, I don't recommend everyone stay with the used books, but there's no reason not to start there. Not to start there for Amazon FBA. So what other ways can you make money besides Amazon and eBay? Obviously, there's the other apps like Mercari, like Poshmark, uh, like Etsy, like Facebook Marketplace. Um, I'm not going to be doing Facebook Marketplace this year. I don't like meeting up with people, but I am going to have my own website. So I bought the domain resellermysteryboxes.com, and uh, I think I'm going to sell my own mystery boxes on the website. Uh, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of having like a... Um, a price multiplier. So if the if the box has, let's say, seven hundred and fifty dollars in completed listings, so that could be, that could be seven hundred DVDs that sell for a dollar. That's not going to be the case, but it could be that. Uh, it could be ten, you know, ten sweaters that sell for seventy five bucks, uh, and actually have a sold, uh, completed listing on on eBay. Then I would charge. Uh, 250 bucks for you know for example a multiple of three i think that's the best way to do it it's more of like a wholesale relationship so the margins are going to be considerably lower than if you were to go into thrift stores and buy stuff that way because i gotta make money on this still but i think that i can probably make about make about uh double my money if i sell things for one third the uh the ebay sold price um, it's going to be stuff that sells infrequently. It's not going to be like, you can sell a hundred of these in one day because I would just sell them myself. Uh, but it certainly is going to be a good way for someone who has a hobby eBay business to build up a uh, reliable inventory without having to go out and shop. Um, or just, you know, a way to learn new kinds of inventory to sell. So you can do that too. You can have your own website. You don't have to sell on Amazon or eBay. You can sell in, uh, in, in tons of different marketplaces or tons of different ways. Uh, Lori says, smart, I'd be interested, means that I have to drag my three-year-old and three-month-old to the thrift store. Yeah, certainly. Sounds like the kind of thing that'd be good for you. <laughs> anything anything to not, not require that. All right, we are at 52 minutes. Uh, I'm going to open up last call for questions, and we're, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, we'll be live next Wednesday. No uh, no interview this, this Friday. I was thinking about it. Um, you know, obviously I have to figure out how I'm going to change my channel for 2021 to make it as uh, effective as possible. Uh, Anthony says, how could I sell, I think you mean sell my own product. I have earbuds. So, uh, you could put it on Mercari. Um, is this your own private label? If it's your own private label, you can have your own website with a brand on there and a, and a, uh, an email address. And as long as that email address is the same as your Amazon seller account email address, you can open up a, um, uh, you can make your own listings on Amazon. Uh, you can create a listing on eBay and just do a bulk listing. You can put your own, you can, you know, sell them, you can wholesale them to gas stations, you know, for a fraction of the price. Uh, there's tons of ways to do it. How do you make your own web store at 11? Do you mean you're 11 years old or like at 11, the news? Because if you're 11 years old, I would just say uh, you ask for help from an adult. I don't know. Um, I have no idea what the technical attitude of the average 11-year-old is. So I can't really answer that question. It's, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. When I was 11, I did not know anything about websites. I, I just went door-to-door -door selling stuff. So how do you make your own web store? I guess you would, I mean, yeah, you would just have to Google that and follow probably about 600 tutorials because you're starting from scratch, I assume. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you make it the same way you make it when you're 30 years old. You make it the same way you make it when you're 50 years old. How do you make money at 11 years old? You you sell things. You know, you can... 11 years old is so young, you can hardly even, like, lift up things. So you can't do really much manual labor. Um, I think you mostly have to just, like, wait until you're, until you're at least, like, 15 years old or 13... And then you can start doing like mowing lawns and raking, raking lawns and shoveling, shoveling snow and that kind of stuff. But at 11, maybe babysitting is what 11 year olds do. Um, you know, you could have an adult sell list things for you on Amazon or eBay, but you're going to have a hard time having an account because you're so young and they have rules about that. Uh, you know, we really haven't had 11 year olds making money since like the industrial revolution. <laughs> 
might be ripe to try the old place and ad for the product in the newspaper trick. So retro and low competition. I have never, I have not bought a newspaper in a long time. I have not checked the classified since I was like 15 years old. A long, long time. All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. Thank you all for watching. Kind of a low-key, uh, you know, live stream. We're back on Wednesday. I'll have more to talk about, a lot more interesting stuff. And uh, don't be a shithead. I will see you guys later. Happy New Year.